Vijay joins in to talk about trade as well. Vijay, good morning. There have been hectic deliberations and developments on the political front. How should the market read it? Should it prime itself for uh, elections as early as October, which is the chatter in Delhi? Or do you think there's a different way to read this? It's probably going to have an impact on policy, not so much in terms of instant elections. I don't think uh, anybody is seriously talking about uh, elections in October uh, at all. Uh, I think to some extent uh, there is considerable media hype about these two ministers. Uh, um, I, I don't see uh, any, any, any reason at all for the Congress party to call for fresh elections. We are going to have some major state level elections in uh, Rajasthan and a few other uh, states uh, before that. Um, they would like to see what happens there. So I think um, there is absolutely no political instability uh, at all. Uh, uh, what's happening is that last two, three years, because of the current affairs channels uh, having a lot of their time spent on scams, etc., there's a feeling there's political uh, uh, you know, uncertainty. But politics is played on numbers and hard realities. How much uh, Akhilesh Yadav wants the government to continue uh, and many other factors. Nobody reads, uh, sees the TV channel and decides how to vote in parliament. So, uh, surely, I mean, investors should not at all worry about political stability. What one level below is uh, reforms, as you were asking. Much of the reforms are out of the way, the FDI and multi brand and, and things like that. You have a couple of things like uh, Companies Act and uh, the pension bill and, and insurance, which which would be, of course, good in terms of uh, sentiment, uh, but on the ground, uh, their impact uh, on the ac actual macros of India, like current account deficit or interest rates, is, is going to be marginal. So here again, I think we should not talk too much about reforms. It's nice to talk about them, but when you look at investors and their way of buying and selling stocks uh, right now, I think what we need, the macros we need to concentrate on our, your current account deficit, your interest rates and your IIP. They are sending mixed signals. Um, the inflation is, uh, is coming down slowly. Um, the IIP has been terrible. So we need to worry uh, how fast the recovery is. There are some green shoots in the, in the March numbers in IIP, but very, very early days. And CAD, of course, uh, is taking a relief from the gold and the commodity prices. So these are some of the uh, bigger issues, macro issues that should worry investors and uh, I would say it is sort of uh, iffy, 50% this way, 50% that way. Vijay, we didn't quite get uh, to ask you about the markets per se. Do you expect the market run to continue and what's the recommendation that you would give an investor after this near 600 point rally in a span of one month? I think we need to look at the market in, in two uh, stages, two time compartments. Uh, will it continue to go up in the next couple of months? Uh, I really wonder, I doubt it, because some amount of uh, up to the type of run that you just said, uh, it is normal uh, not only for traders but even for investors to take some profits off the table given the volatility of, uh, of stock markets in India. So in the near term, any further upside from this level uh, is likely to be very muted. Uh, but in the longer term, um, let's assume that the, uh, the, the shadow of the election would be cast somewhere from around November or December when actual dates are announced. Before that, uh, the, the macroeconomics. And I think that the setup for the market is extremely good uh, for till about October, November for two reasons. We are still um, uh, underperformed uh, the global markets. Uh, if you look at the Dow, the DAX, the Nikkei and all, they are at multi-year highs. Uh, we are, we are uh, below that. And second, um, most uh, large investors feel that India is at an inflection point. There have been five different occasions when we had bull runs, when the IIP uh, bottomed out and in interest rates topped out. And today the 10-year the bond uh, rates are about 7.65. Whoever thought six months back that the 10-year bond was about 8.5, that will be 7.65. A very strong negative uh, correlation between uh, uh, interest rates and equity markets in India. So some of the uh, ma economic macros are favorable for a continuation of the bull run. But I said for the next one and a half to two months, one will have to keep one's fingers crossed because naturally there will be a fair amount of profit booking by even large investors. Vijay, there's some incremental optimism building on telecom as a space. What did you make of Relcom's numbers and would you buy anything from that pocket now? 
Well, uh, RELCOM was sort of par for the course uh, as uh, uh, we just saw the, uh, the strong earnings was aided by a, a one-off. Uh, they have managed to bring down the debt level a little bit, but the ARPUs are very low, you know. Uh, their entry strategy of uh, sort of giving it away is uh, their ARPUs are less than 50% of the other major players. So unless, unless the intrinsic profitability improves, uh, I don't see, and the way RELCOM after Mukesh Ambani's uh, sort of indirect entry into the company, um, Pamel, I mean, uh, the stock from about 70 to 110 now, a huge run, uh, it's, it'll be inadvisable to, uh, to buy any more of RELCOM, probably it's time to exit some of your holdings. Even the other um, telecom companies like IDEA has had a huge uh, bull run. Uh, there, is, there is not uh, enough. Uh, Bharti, of course, has its share of problems with Zain and the African acquisitions where things are taking a bit longer for the debt to be sorted out and for the profitability to come in. So there are all uh, company-specific issues and there are also industry-specific uh, issues. So uh, at the current level, I would not uh, advise people to increase their exposure to telecom. Uh, they would remain at best market performers in the next 12 months. Spark, from your part of the world, Vijay, what would you do with Maruti and the uh, enthusiasm surrounding it because of what's happened with, uh, you know, the global currency moves? Maruti is having a huge uh, bull run um, uh, due to, uh, I think, uh, two reasons. Uh, primarily, as people have pointed out, uh, the N uh, and in many of their newer versions, a substantial portion uh, of the CKDs are imported from Japan. So there is a, a very large uh, improvement in the EBITDA because of that. And these are all material sensitive companies, you know. The, the raw material to sales price is almost 70% in automobile companies. And secondly, uh, they've been very, very successful in their new models. If you look at the way Tata Motors has just come off um, in India as compared to Maruti. The success story of Maruti is its ability to understand the market and bring out new models. And I should say, in a longer term, the, the catching up of petrol, uh, you know, six months back, uh, Mithali, uh, the uh, diesel prices were about 55 to 60 percent of petrol prices. Today they are 78 to 80 percent. So we are, we are catching up, one, through petrol prices falling and diesel prices going up. So, and um, uh, Maruti, as you know, is king in the, in the, in the petrol-driven cars. So all this is working in Maruti's favor. And today, if you saw the automobile industry, I mean, it's a 20-month low or something. Uh, the production, ALL came out, it's a pixie number, the two-wheelers are in trouble. So if anybody wants an exposure to auto, uh, Maruti is about the best. So that's also helping Maruti. So even at this higher level, uh, at any, every decline, I would advise investors to add a little bit of Maruti. We should touch 2,000 in Maruti in the next 12 months.